long legs had quite a few issues, but one of them definitely wasn't from the marketing team. Kudos to them because they promoted the heck out of this film. It was overhyped, but I don't think that hype was overkill because at the end of the day, it was worth seeing in the theater and experiencing with an audience. But the comparisons to The Summers of the Lambs and Seven, that was a bit too far. Here is my review of Long Legs. First of all, the promos had Long Legs being the best horror film in the last 10 years, and I would disagree. I saw Talk to Me last year. That was a really good horror film. And the year before that, I saw Smile, which I think was very effective. This cinematically is an achievement. I believe it is beautiful to look at. And I think that director Oswald Perkins, for the most part, did a fantastic job. I love that he has his own signature, distinct style that is not anchored to his father's legacy. His father was Anthony Perkins. He has his own style. He even got kudos from Jason Blum. So I think the horror genre is in good hands with him. He also wrote this film. And although the story is not new, he has a refreshing spin on how to tell a familiar story. So in respect to the story, I think he did a good job. Where the film loses me is the character arc of the main character, which I'll get into, and the comparisons. Once you compare this to an Oscar-winning film, I can't get that out of my head. Oscar-winning films. Seven, as one of the best procedural mysteries, you're comparing this movie to that? That's a lot to live up to. As well as The Silence of the Lambs, with the Oscar-worthy performances of that film and how the story develops, you have a lot to live up to, and I don't think this film cleared that bar. Long Legs is a crime thriller with supernatural and horrifying elements, and it's centered around Michael Monroe's character. She plays FBI agent Lee Hawker, who is pursuing a serial killer case involving an occult leader who uses the dolls that he makes to possess the families he donates them to. Nicolas Cage plays the occult leader, and he is so terrifying, not just with his presence on screen, but all of the suspense leading up to his physical on-screen presence. And he does it masterfully. It's as if he was born to play this role. His character elevates the film for me. He works, again, because a lot of what he does is build up to when we see him on screen. Blair Underwood is Agent Lee Hawker's superior within the FBI, and Alicia Witt plays Agent Lee Hawker's mom. This story takes place in the 90s, and I immediately, from the first scene, felt transfixed by the imagery, the grainy texture of the cinematography, the set design, the wardrobe, the hair and makeup. It really felt atmospheric. The tone is immediately set which heightened the experience for me watching it. I think it's a beautiful film. Where it loses me is Michael Monroe's performance, and I'll tell you why. I loved Michael Monroe in Watcher, one of the first films that I reviewed on my channel during the pandemic. She was so good in, in there. But with all of the hype, comparing it to The Silence of the Lambs, I couldn't get that out of my mind. She never convinced me that she was an FBI agent, even a recruit. When we meet Clary Starling, when we meet her conditioning her body physically and mentally to become a CSI agent, a forensic scientist, if you will, we follow her on the development of her character. And Jodie Foster playing Clary Starling dug deep. It's such a layered performance. And I see why this is compared to that because in the same way, Michael Monroe, she's a new recruit to the FBI. She has a pivotal case, a career defining case, but I think she's unmatched. Clary Starling is a new recruit. She has this case and she's being used to lure information out of a serial killer. She's a pawn, if you will. She's dangled like a carrot. 
And I feel like that is the end of the comparison because in in this film, Long Legs, I don't feel like Micah Monroe's character was that layered. She seemed to be a step behind and unmatched for something like this. And maybe that's supposed to work for the story, but it doesn't when you get to the third act. This is a chapter film. And by the third chapter, all of the suspense building, all of that, the, the terrifying elements just built in a decrescendo that I feel felt flat by the time I got to the third act. A lot of times she's drawing her gun, she doesn't shoot it. She seems too nervous, too late in the development of the character arc that we're following. On that journey with her, she still feels like the time when we met her. When she shoots, I will admit, she really shoots, but a lot of times she's not even using it. It's, it didn't make sense to the character development, I'm saying. She's just too nervous for too long and she's so unmatched for so long and she learns who it is so soon but then she's not doing enough about it to make the story feel realistic or it didn't really have any realism. And now this is a story that I've seen before and that I've seen done better. So I'm expecting a lot from her, maybe too much from her character. I'm expecting too much because I've seen this character play out before better. So that was the problem I had. I think it was good to drive audiences by using two films that a lot of people, not just Cinephiles Love, Seven and The Silence of the Lambs. But if you can't live up to that hype, that's going to affect, adversely affect the film for people like me who sees a lot of these films and have a lot to compare it to. So I think that's where it falters. I like her as a scream queen. I think she is good, but I just feel like this character wasn't as developed to compare it to Jodie Foster's Oscar winning performance. Is this worth seeing in a theater? A hundred percent. This is one that you will want to share with an audience because there are some very terrifying elements that could get under your skin if you were to see it alone. Perhaps if horrors are not your thing. There are some really creepy, gory things that happen that could penetrate long after the credits roll. You may still feel it penetrating in your spirit. So I wouldn't advise that you see it alone. It is better to share it with an audience, but maintain expectation because if you love Seven, if you love The Silence of the Lambs, this doesn't clear that bar. This is a recommendation for me, but again, lower just a bit so that you can enjoy the film for what it is and not for what it's compared to. At any rate, Long Legs is currently in theaters now.